Welcome to an introduction to perfect squares and square roots. In order to better understand square roots, we need to spend a little bit of time talking about special numbers called perfect squares. Perfect squares are the numbers that we obtain when we square an integer. So here we see the integers from one through 10, and if we square them, we get perfect squares. So if we wanted to, we could expand them. One squared equals one times one or one. Two squared is equal to two times two or four. Three squared or three times three or nine. 16, 25. Over on the right we have 36, 49, 64, 81, and 100. So all of these are considered perfect squares. Again, if we take an integer and square it, we obtain a perfect square. Another way to think of a perfect square that will help when simplifying square roots is to think of a perfect square as a number that has two equal integer factors. So now that you have a feel for perfect squares, let's go ahead and talk about square roots. To determine the square root of a number, we have a special symbol as we see here. This is the square root of nine. The square root of a number is the number times itself that equals the given number. What that means is to determine the square root of nine, we need to determine what number times itself would give us nine. And since nine is a perfect square, we can write nine as three times three, or for one or two, we could write three squared. Therefore, the square root of nine is equal to three. And again, the reason it's three is because three times three is equal to the given number nine. Therefore, the square root of 36, again, 36 is a perfect square, because we can write that as six times six, or even six squared if we want, and this will equal one factor of six. Again, the reason this is six is because six times six is equal to the given number, 36. The square root of 49, because that's seven times seven, or seven squared, would be equal to seven. And let's look at one more. The square root of 81, because 81 is nine times nine, or nine squared would equal one factor of nine. One more thing I'd like you to notice is that taking the square root of a number and squaring a number are opposite operations or could be called inverse operations. Notice here where we have the square root of three squared, the square root and the square undo each other and the result is just three. Here we have the square root of six squared, the square root and the square undo each other and the result is one factor of six. Now there's one more thing we need to discuss. Actually, numbers have two square roots. If I asked you, what are the square roots of 25? Notice we can obtain 25 from the product of positive five times positive five, and also from the product of negative five and negative five. So if somebody asked, what are the square roots of 25? we would actually say positive five and negative five. However, to avoid confusion, when we want the positive square root of a number, we use this notation here called the principal square root. And if we want the negative square root of a number, we just put a negative in front of the square root. And this avoids confusion between which square root we're referring to. Now let's go and take a look at two more square roots. If we take a look at the square root of 20, there isn't a whole number times itself that would give us 20. So square roots only simplify nicely when this number under here called the radicand is a perfect square. The closest perfect square that is less than 20 would be 16. And the closest perfect square that is greater than 20 would be 25. And since the square root of 16 is equal to four, and the square root of 25 is equal to five, the square root of 20 must fall somewhere between four and five. And in order to get a closer approximation of the square root of 20, we usually just use a calculator. So let's go ahead and do that. On this calculator, if we press second x squared, it brings up the square root symbol, and we just type in 20, a closed parenthesis, and then press enter. So if we wanted to round this to the nearest hundredth, 
we could say the square root of 20 is approximately 4.47. Remember what that means is if we take 4.47 and we square it, we should get approximately 20. Notice it's slightly less than 20 because we did round this value. So unless we're taking the square root of a perfect square, we will normally have to get a decimal approximation. Let's go ahead and try one more. 61 is not a perfect square. The closest perfect square that is less than 61 would be 49, and the closest perfect square that is greater than 61 would be 64. Well, since the square root of 49 is equal to 7, and the square root of 64 is equal to 8, the square root of 61 must fall somewhere between 7 and 8. And since 61 is closer to 64, this value will be closer to 8. Let's go ahead and use our calculator to get a decimal approximation of the square root of 61. Again, second x squared, we type in 61, close parenthesis, press enter, and it looks like it's approximately 7.81, which means if we take 7.81 and multiply it by itself, we should get approximately 61. Let's go ahead and try it. And again, you can see it's slightly less than 61 because we did round. So just to summarize this idea, if we're taking the square root of a perfect square, it works out very nicely. But if we take the square root of a number that's not a perfect square, we're only able to get a decimal approximation. I hope you found this introduction helpful.